ready to master the power of endurance. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, is this like a Echo the Dolphin 3D? It absolutely is. Nailed it. It's oh! Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have only ever seen this as a side scroller on the Sega Genesis. Why are you doing this, Echo? This is what you wanted. You make a wish, it comes true on this show. Amazing. I swear to Blah, blah, blah. You can tail walk. Oh. Isn't oh, that what you wanted tail. to do? Yeah. I guess you can't just sort of walk along on land and do a little flippers. No. I'd love it if, yeah. if it does that, though. Oh my god, like, so if you can just like go around like a market town or something, just like... No, he's just on the surface of the water. Hello. That does look freaky though. Imagine if he's doing that on land. <laughs> and there's a shark involved, so otherwise I feel a bit cheated. Hmm. I'm expecting a shark now. Well, fighting two sharks, I think. There you go, you got your wish. Hey. I think there might be an octopus, so prepare for tentacles. <laughs> Genesis as well, that's like the American version. I thought they were different systems. Nah, so like in the UK it's called Mega Drive. Yeah. In Europe, uh, in America they called it Genesis. Okay. Um, right, it was my cousins. Uh, they had this going on, so maybe they had like an import or something. Um, but yeah, later on, my brother got a uh, Sega Mega Drive, which was, you know, just most exciting experience. I remember playing the game and that bit is yeah. there's like an updraft of water. Yeah. You have to use the rock falling down to allow you to swim yeah. through it. You know, when they change the entire experience of the rest of the game in order to include the old game you know they fucked up there's like there's no reason to do this if the game that you've made is actually compelling I think it was out around the time where everything had to be okay. at the point of video games where everything had to go into three, three, three dimensional okay uh Bozeman Gap, also known in English as Bushman's Hole, is a deep submerged freshwater cave in the northern Cape province of South Africa, which has been dived to a depth of 282 metres, 972 feet. Wow. Yeah. Can you look up how, uh, how far it's possible to dive with uh, just swimming it? Maximum dive depth. Yeah. Loving the music, it's really chill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've not appreciated that nearly enough. Oh, no, then they went all synthy. They, they wobbled the... <laughs> yeah. Um, South Africa's Nuno Gomez with a 2005 dive to 1,000 feet. 
Ah, still holds the official world record for the deepest cave dive after diving to a depth of 282 metres in the Bokelman's yes. Gat cave in South Africa in 1996. Because the lower down you go, the quicker your... Everything. Yeah. Out. Yeah. And you also, you can't just go like, push it, like how long, how yeah. low can I go? Because um, you need to take your time on the way back. Yeah, up. you need to resurface or you get, get no, bent. Not not resurface. You need to uh, sort of reacclimatize. Yeah, yeah. Different, at different uh, depths. So you sort yeah. of you get to like sixty feet below and you stay there for a bit and then you yeah. go up to. Yeah. It's mad, like the math you have to do to calculate how long you can yeah. stay at certain depths. Yeah. To allow yourself deep enough uh, to get back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's the that thing with something like um, the every 30 feet extra in depth that you go, um, you double the risk. Yes. Yeah, I, I dived the, uh, the blue hole. Um, you heard of it? No. You know how the sea is blue. Yeah. Uh, the Some blue hole blue is others. bluer. Okay. So, like, if you look at um, a satellite picture, mm -hmm. it looks different from, from space or whatever. So it's not like a like a an archipelago. This is this is a word I do not know what it means. It's not like an island chain or like sort of a sunken volcano or it's just a bit of the sea that's blue. There's like a. So it's in it's off the coast of Belize. It's like this, oh, okay. so it's, this yeah. is the in the world. It's like the second largest bit of coral reef after the Great Barrier. Okay. Um, but it's like quite a bit out of sea, yeah. and there's like this sort of like bank here, and then you sort of go over it. It's like going over a cliff. Um, okay. It's just kind of like an underwater bay. Yeah. Um, which isn't very far down, like loads of coral, mm -hmm. and you go sort of like over the edge of this sort of like cliff, and then it just goes down. And yeah. like it's, it's it's pretty scary. It, like you, you, yeah. you compared it to like this this cave to like um, more people have yeah been to the moon yeah than, than down this deep. Like that's kind of what it felt like going down mm -hmm. that deep. It yeah. felt really otherworldly because the deeper you go, yeah. the less colours you can perceive. Okay. The colder it gets, yeah. And the only other thing like hanging around there is like sharks and stuff. So it is like, oh. <laughs> and and like and the uh, the the, the yeah. your, your your distance you can see gets a lot yeah. worse. Yeah. So that kind of makes it scary as well. Yeah. Like you can't see that far in front of you, so you want to like stay close to the dive master. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the. Um, South African guy. It's um, it's on a show called Snap Judgment. Um, it's a fantastic show anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, this German guy is describing um, he uh, for reasons which it's worth listening to if you listen to the whole thing. Um, but basically, he's in the cave. He goes down too deep. Um, his regulator shatters, which. Yeah, turns out regulators are an important part of being able to breathe. But, you know, he's trained for this, he's a professional, he's trained for it. Um, so he just starts mixing his gases manually. Um, until he makes a slight miscalculation um, and gets his helium wrong. Uh, which, not only, they describe it in the, in the show as like taking six martinis at once. Um, and also got a uh, bubble in his inner ear. And that never comes out, sort of thing? Or... Well, um, no, it means that you can no longer detect which way is up and which way is down, because your balance is gone. Oh, right. Which way is up? Oh, wow. Um, which way yeah. is up? Um, starts vomiting and passing out oh, underwater. Do you have, like, a dive partner? No. He was the safety diver for someone else. Um, yeah. Um, Bushman's Cave is... Um, I don't know how this intri how different this is from every other underwater cave, but this one particularly, um, the way that you find it is you go out into the desert yeah. and you drive, and you drive, and you drive. Desert? Yeah. Like it's not where I'd expect to see like a big, yeah. uh, 
like massive expanse of water. Yeah, yeah. That that's because um, so if you go up a little hill and then there's a little bit of a cliff, and then there is like a you know a five foot a five foot puddle in the ground. Yeah, some weeds on top. Pull those aside. And you go in. Sounds like a magical hidden. Wonderland. Yeah. Um, sounds like the gateway to hell because you go through this and there is just enough space for a diver and equipment to go through. Um, which means that once you're in, there is no light whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and Do you have like a head torch. Yeah, we had incredibly powerful lights with it, yeah. but the you know it's the size of like you know football fields. Once you're in, yes, there's like a roof and it expands out. And, so, and, you, and you can't tell where that no. to get a cow is. No. And this guy didn't live to tell this story, he, surely. He did. Um, right, carry yeah. on. Um, so, shining the torch round, and there is nothing for it to reflect off. Because um, he's too far from the bottom, and the sides are too far away. Um, at some point, whilst he is vomiting, passing out, mixing his own gases. Um, he loses contact with the shot line. Um, which is the thing from the hole. Yes. Uh, so you've gone down with yeah. a guide rope, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, he's then just spinning, with no way of knowing even which way is up. Just a clue on a rainbow, I think. Anyway, as dolphins all do. Douglas Adams was right. Good old Douglas Adams. Oh, he's just great. Um, and yeah, basically, at one point whilst he's spinning, he sees a flash of light and it's the shot line. He manages to get to it. And he manages to. Did he pick the right way? <laughs> I really hope they had some kind of marking like this way is down, this way is up. Um, and yeah, got up to one of the other support divers, um, broke on his little pad, and so managed they, to... they had a support diver just staying at a certain depth. Yeah. And then they were only supposed they to go down if there was a problem. The, yeah. Their own mouthpiece for a bit or something. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and like I say, that, that is well just... just to not panic. Yeah. Like when you're learning to dive, you just get taught the most sort of basic stuff but you really have to like internalise it it's just like what happens if your mouthpiece falls out you do this movement yeah. because it's coming over the back here and then there's no way when you come back round that you haven't yeah. got it like because it yeah. could be yeah it, it, it's not going to respond how you think it will because it's you know, yeah it's, it's in zero G kind of yeah but like you could sort yeah. of just be doing yeah. this but if, you, if you're calm and just and, and it feels a bit weird, like just practicing this yeah. basic movement, like duh. Yeah. Obviously, this is. Yeah. Yeah. You can, I would never need this. But Obviously, if, these people will. But if, you, if, if you're if you're like panicking, it'd be so yeah. easy to just be like grabbing out and then not have this method yeah. where you're going to get it 100 percent of the time. Yeah. 